I received a very short message from the Lord, which however contains a vast amount of information and unlocked a series of teachings which are truly, truly incredible. I am going to read the message and provide the explanation later. This will be a two-part video, and that tells you how much was contained in just a short message. As always, I'm here to tell you that I am not here on my behalf. I'm here out of obedience to the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, who is my Lord and Savior, and who is coming very soon as he's led us to believe. And as we understand, the time is extremely short. Now, I believe this message will come as an encouragement, but I also am here to warn you that the Lord has been extremely clear with me that the hour and the day are not given. So we should focus on understanding what he wants us to do as we prepare and wait for his arrival, which truly could be any day as we spoke about the time frame and the so-called window in which it's very likely that he will return. Now, before I read the message, I want to remind you that I am extremely grateful for all of the supporting messages, the prayers and the blessings. I received the message on February 20th, 2023 at 28 a.m. The message says, Soon you will be home, son. Rejoice. For life is but a vapor. Retire now, son. I love you. Lord Jesus, Abba, Yeshua, Amen, Holy Spirit. So in the message, the Lord says, Soon you will be home, son. Rejoice, for life is but a vapor. Now, we know that this comes from James 4, and particularly verses 13 and 14 and in verses 13 and 14 of James 4 it says go to now you that say today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain and then verse 14 whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow for what is your life it is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanishes away so this led me to study the entire chapter 4 of james and as we read through james we're going to find a series of extremely important things but yet back into this verse 13 there is a reminder or a link let's say to the two days plus the third day which is this concept we're going to explain in a minute and what i mean by that we have learned already in the luke 13 and 32 that the day the lord talks about the two days which are the two thousand years for his return and then the third day that being the millennium so this verse in a different way leads us to see this also because it says buy and sell which we know have also a reference to the mark of the beast and therefore to this time of tribulations so for certain here we're reminder is a reminder to look into the two days or two thousand years and the third day as the millennium so the Holy Spirit led me to the second Chronicles chapter two, verse two. And sometimes you hear me say two Chronicles two, two. And this is because I focus also on these numbers uh, of chapters and verses, which are really important. But immediately you can see that is the two, two, two or 2022 20, has certainly a relationship to that. So let's see what uh, second Chronicles two verse two says and this is Solomon building the temple as well as a house for the kingdom so we immediately know there's a relationship with the end times and Solomon told out three score and ten thousand so it's seventy thousand okay man to bear burdens and fourscore thousand which is eighty 
thousand to hew in the mountains, and then three thousand and six hundred to oversee them. So this is an incredible discovery. As if we are told that this time frame starts in 2022. And then remember the calendar as we discussed, we are still technically under the Lord's calendar in 22, which will uh, be completed in, on March 23rd. So what is it saying? It's saying in 22, you're going to have 70 thousand and eighty thousand and so it's a 70 to 80 which is the psalm 90 10 year span as we know and we're left over with thousand and thousand these are the two thousand or two thousand years from the return of the lord which is included in the 10 years of the 70 thousand to the 80 thousand this is absolutely mind-blowing is really telling us there's a 10-year period from 22 to 32 and we know this from the previous calendars because of 52 coming from the leviticus 19 23 which will give us the four the three plus one years to get to 52 from 48 which then sets the 70 starting in 22 and going to the 80 all the way to 32. So the 22 to 32 is the 10 years of labor and sorrow for the Jewish nation, for Jewish people, which starts in 22 and completes itself in 32. Now, remember that the Lord gave us that vision of the Israeli protest. That was given, the vision was given in October, and I posted that in the great is the tribulation series and it came to pass at the end of 22 as a hundred thousand people or eighty thousand people protesting in israel so we know that that time is started and here's the final confirmation why because the 3600 to oversee them it's really 3600 divided by 360 which is the year gives us 10. it's telling us again it's that 10 year span, which is what? The seven plus three, as we see in Job one, which is the 10 years. So this is a massive, amazing confirmation. Again, from the Lord telling us, yes, it is the 2000 years when I return. Yes, it's gonna be 70 to 80 years for Israel. And yes, it is starting in 22, and it will be completed in 32. And it will be including the seven years of tribulation, but most importantly, of the wedding. Within that, we can start working out the calendar. And for now, we have been confirmed the 31 AD as the resurrection, which will then take us to the 2031 AD as the return that is right before the fig tree generation ends in 32. And why is that 31? Well, we know because of the 3 BC mark of the star of Bethlehem that will give us 31 AD and then 2031. But now look how amazing this is because the Lord unveiled another mystery, which is the 30 pieces of silver, which Brother Aaron from God a Minute talks about, and he is correcting that, that the Joseph 20 pieces and the Lord's 30 pieces lead to 2030. That's correct. But the Lord said, but there is one more coin, one more piece of silver. And that comes from the Matthew 17, 27. Why? Because we've seen that before as the fish. That one fish has a coin inside. So the fish is added to the 153 fish to give us 154 fish. But the coin is added to the 30 pieces of silver to give us 31 coins, which confirms the Lord is telling you and us and all that, yes, the resurrection was in 31, not 30, which then will make the second coming in 2031. So the fish has to be added to 153 fish, which has to do with the rapture, and the coin has to be added to the, to the 30 pieces of silver which leads up to the second coming. 
So we have these two pieces, incredible revelation put together. So now we know from the previous study that 153 plus 1 is 154, which is the Strong's for ask. And then we confirm it again with the James 4 chapter, verses 2 and 3. Because it says, You lust and have not, you kill and desire to have and cannot obtain, you fight and war, yet you have not because you ask not. In verse 3, you ask and you receive not because you ask a miss that you may consume it upon your lust. So instead, the correct way of asking is the Matthew 7, 7 that says, Ask and it shall be given to you. Seek, okay, and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened to you. Now, we already know that the knocking part is the revelation for one. Knocking what? The door shall be opened. That's a revelation for one which says, after this I looked and behold a door was open in heaven and the first voice which I heard was as if it were of a trumpet talking with me saying come up either and I will show you things which must be thereafter. So we know this is the rapture. So all of this the 153 fish plus 154 takes us to ask, seek and knock, knock takes us to the rapture. But then again let's settle on the seek for one second. Because the seek, which again, you can see the ask is the entry point and knock is the exit point, but the seek is the middle portion. And the seek takes us to what? To Hebrew 11.6, which is, but without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. The Lord is telling you, you have to seek after you ask and before the door is open you got to be seeking and this seeking how is that done well let's look at proverbs 25 in proverbs 25 2 says it is the glory of god to conceal a thing but the honor of kings is to search out a matter what does that mean this is talking about a matter which is a mystery because you have to search it out. And it's the glory of God to conceal it. And he's telling you, you have to search it out. You have to be watching but seeking so that the mystery will be shown to you. And what is the mystery? Let's go to 1 Corinthians 15 or 1 Corinthians 15, 51. And he says, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. And where does it take us? To verse 52, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall all be changed. So this is the rapture, and you can see how the rapture, the mystery, and the seeking all takes us back to the asking portion which then connects to the knocking portion, which is the door open, which is the come up either. I want you to focus on come up either because this is the key that unlocks the process of the rapture and the entering into the kingdom through the door that is open. So the seeking portion is fundamental as we've seen. But let's continue because what else does this say since we just talked about the come up either? What does it say in Proverbs 25 verse 7? which is the proverb we've just been studying. It's talking about going to the feast or standing before a prince. And in verse 7 it says, For better it is that it be said unto you, Come up either, than thou shoutest be put lower in the presence of the priest whom thine eyes have seen. This is the same come up either that we have seen in Revelation for one. So we know the Lord is telling us about the rapture again and what is that related to this idea of being humble which we have just seen where in james 4 let's go and take a look in verses 6 to 10 james 4 says verses 6 but he giveth he giveth more grace wherefore he said god resisted the proud but giveth grace unto the humble and then he continues on talking about being humble 
So as you put Proverbs 25 to, together with James 4 and the part of seeking, what is this saying? When you go to a feast, put yourself in the lower seat. The last will be first. Put yourself in the lower seat that you might be called up to come up either. This is the idea of being humble, which means to rely fully on the Lord. Where else do we see this? What does it connect us to? Let's go to Luke 14.10. 